SpaceX has updated the Starlink FAQ to clarify that Starlink mobile plans now work at up to 10 miles per hour in motion, offering reassurance to boaters and cruisers like us that swinging at anchor or slow speed cruising is not going to get you cut off from service. But what about traveling at faster speeds? We've got the details. Hi, I'm Chris with the Mobile Internet Resource Center here to give you an update on SpaceX's Starlink, which has become incredibly popular with boaters and RVers because it gives you connectivity pretty much anywhere you go that you have a big clear view of the sky on the water, on the land, um, potentially all the way around the world, depending on which plans you have. But there's been some confusion, particularly since SpaceX kind of uh, updated and clarified and consolidated their plans back in May. And their plans that they laid out, and we've had prior stories on this, defined that only their mobile priority plan, their most expensive $250 a month plan, supports in-motion usage, or their mobile regional or mobile global plans, the $150 and $200 a month plans, you can add mobile priority data for $2 a gigabyte and also get access to that in-motion capability. That's expensive in-motion usage. But, well, what exactly is SpaceX considering in motion? They have now at last updated their FAQs to set a, a threshold, and that is 10 miles per hour. So the regular mobile plans, the mobile regional and mobile global, without paying extra for that mobile priority data, will officially support in motion usage at speeds up to 10 miles an hour. That means, well, swinging at anchor like we are right here, just fine. Cruising on ICW at typical uh, trawler or sailboat speeds, just fine. You get unlimited uh, service, unlimited Starlink data, and you will not be cut off for excessive motion until you cross that 10 mile an hour threshold. Now, SpaceX still does have the ability to opt into paying for mobile priority data so you can still get access to in-motion data at faster speeds if you are cruising that way or if you are in an RV and you want to stay connected underway. Um, that does open up a, some kind of interesting questions though because um, you know, Starlink resellers like uh, Weingard and others like Mobile Must Have and stuff that are reselling these plans to the RV market have been um, offering their $150 Starlink uh, mobile regional plan with the claim of, well, this works in RVs at highway speed and will give you, um, keep you connected while you're, you know, keep your passengers entertained with unlimited streaming while you're traveling. It's not yet certain what SpaceX is going to do about these plans that are being um, marketed and sold this way. Are they going to grandfather them in? Are they going to allow devices sold just via this particular RV focused channel to have unlimited highway speed connectivity? Or are they going to kind of force all these customers to decide if they want to stay connected at highway speeds, they have to pay extra for that mobile priority data. That's $2 a gigabyte. You're not going to be spending that to keep the kids entertained with SpongeBob. So there's some open questions still remaining about how these other types of plans will be treated when they're bought other than directly from SpaceX. There's now a conflict between the offering directly on the Starlink webpage and the offering from some of the resellers. So that is an interesting thing we're going to be keeping track of is how this enforcement actually rolls out because SpaceX hasn't really started enforcing this 10 mile an hour speed limit. They've just now clarified that it is there. One other thing that people have been really concerned about is, well, officially in motion usage is only supported with the Starlink flat high performance, um, you know, the $2,500 receiver system. And that is the only one that is you know, fully legally and certified and, and FCC approved for in motion usage. But people have noticed since even before that one came out that the regular $599 Starlink standard like we have here on our boat works just fine in motion. And a lot of people have discovered that particularly if they modify it to also sit flat and not aim so that it can kind of always keep an upward view of the sky, it can work very, very well. And SpaceX has so far never mentioned, well, is the Starlink standard going to be cut off in motion at any point in the future? And also in this FAQ, they've now updated to say, well, the Starlink standard, when you're in using it, it will be basically be work in motion at your own risk. Particularly, we're, I mean, our interpretation of this is when you're moving at 
cruising speeds below 10 miles an hour, they're probably not going to cut you off with a Starlink standard and potentially not even at faster speeds, depending on how they decide to enforce this. So it is some reassurance to actually have them officially mention that there's an at your own risk element to using a Starlink standard. It does void your warranty to use it in motion, but for boats moving at 10 miles an hour, that's really not a lot of motion to be worried about there. At highway speed, a whole different concern. So that's kind of the update on Starlink usage in motion to kind of uh, bring things back to uh, recap. So, so now there are, these are the different ways that you can take a Starlink system on the go and the ways this maps to the different Starlink plans they offer. Now, first up, they have the Starlink standard plan. This is the plan intended for fixed residences and your service does not travel with you as you travel. That service is locked to your registered service address intended for your resident, your official residential address. But SpaceX makes it really easy to change your address as needed. So as you travel, well, it won't work underway, of course. It won't work automatically at your new destination. But if you go into the Starlink app, you can go to the Starlink webpage and you can update your service address as you need it. And about 20 minutes later, this app will update and you will be back online. So that is the most affordable plan is uh, basically $120 a month. And you have Starlink that you can still consider it portable and take it around with you. Uh, next up are their official mobile plans. They have the mobile regional and the mobile global plan. These are plans, the mobile regional is $150 a month and it gives you service anywhere on your home continent on what SpaceX considers land. So you could travel uh, anywhere in North America, Canada, Mexico, Central America, the Caribbean, uh, the United States with a plan that has got a service address in the United States, for example, and you'll be able to get connected as long as you are someplace that on the Starlink map, it is marked as a land grid. So that includes quite a bit of inland waterways, it includes offshore, you know, several miles in most places, um, but you do have to pay attention to that map because it does not provide any ocean coverage. The Starlink global plan is similar. The mobile global plan is similar, but it works anywhere around the world. So this is the plan for, um, you know, international cruisers or um, overlanders or people who are traveling all over the world. The plan will work anywhere but on land. So any grid square that SpaceX has coverage. So some countries, they still don't uh, have legal authorization. And well, this is still an only on land plan for $200 a month. Now, the next plan up is what they call the mobile priority plan. It starts at $250 a month. And this, instead of being an unlimited plan like all the other ones, this is a metered plan. So you have the $250 version of this gives you 50 gigabytes of mobile priority data. And then it becomes basically a mobile global plan. So that mobile priority data works anywhere in the world, including on ocean territories. And it also has higher priority in the network. So you've got like a faster access, faster speeds, um, particularly in congested areas, you will be at the top of the priority list because Starlink is notorious for getting really, really slow in congested areas. But well, if you've got mobile priority data, you're not gonna be subject to that. But well, when your 50 gig is out, you'll become part of the mobile global plan and you'll be actually at a lower priority on the network. But now all of these um, plans then let you opt in to pay $2 a gigabyte for mobile priority data. So if you've got the um, mobile regional or the mobile global and you're doing an ocean crossing, say you're a great looper and you're crossing, um, doing the, the segment across the Gulf and you wanna have uninterrupted connectivity, you could just turn on mobile priority data and pay that $2 a gigabyte until you're back within range of shore. So that is actually the most flexible plan and the one we recommend for most typical cruisers is to get that um, mobile regional plan and turn on mobile priority only when you need it, when you're either going faster than 10 miles an hour and you want to guarantee connectivity or you're crossing any of those grid squares on the map that are ocean related. So that's kind of the, 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 the status of Starlink usage in motion. We are still trying to figure out what's going to be up for the RVers who bought into the flat high performance system and are, we're counting on keeping the kids entertained at highway speed and whether SpaceX will make some accommodations for that. But this is a kind of a, the official documentation as of now of what is in a SpaceX's terms of service and FAQ. And we'll continually track this and uh, keep all of you updated so you can stay connected wherever you go. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, 
consider becoming a member yourself.